with church camps as a counselor. I remember one year where the camp director, taking that story of Jacob and the, and the rocks with oil on them, and he wanted to lay out a, a worship space. And he laid out a bunch of rocks, and he planned to pour olive oil over it, but he forgot to bring olive oil. Well, he went out to the shed there at the campsite and found himself a can of WD-40. And he sprayed all those rocks with WD-40. It wasn't quite stones with oil poured over them. It was more greasy rocks. And yet I say that that space became holy for that group of youth. And I don't know if it was that year at camp or not, but I look back on those youth, and I know two of them that are now ministers, one of them that is a missionary, two of them that are nurses, and I wonder if looking back on that, there was something in that experience that called them. If they somehow standing in that holy setting and the, they found the veil becoming thinner and thinner and, and not only did they see the light of God, but that light began to shine upon them, helping them to discover who they are. My prayer is this day that 
you will have a few moments. And yes, we have a couple of rocks up here with, not WD-40, with olive oil poured over them. But there are other things, including the bread and the cup. Because so often we view God as this thing that is holy and distant from us. And, and yet all that God wants is to come close, and to be present to us. And so God gives us this thing we can hold on to, that we can take in as a reminder that God wants to be that close to us to help us understand who it is that we are. And as we understand that, and as we feel the love of God, it empowers us to embrace it and to run with it and to be transparent before others so that the light that's shining on us can shine through us and upon others. Let us prepare now for a time at the table. all week this week in the city of Detroit and I don't know if you follow much about cities that are much north of us and that were once very industrious cities but Detroit is a city that's been in bankruptcy for a number of years their economic base is completely dissolved and it's a city in much turmoil and as I found myself there and listening to some of the presentations, I discovered that Detroit is a city that's over 80% African American. And yet when the mayor got up to speak, I was a little shocked to see a Caucasian mayor in a city that was so diverse. And he said, you know, the way I got elected in this town, and he's a newly elected mayor, he's been there about a year, I think. As he said, I made an offer in my campaign that was anybody that wants to invite me into their house I'm going to come into their living room and I'm going to listen. And he said he got hundreds of invitations, sometimes at first just seeing if he'd actually do what he committed to do, because as we all know with politicians, sometimes there's a little gap there. But he said as he found himself in living rooms of very rich neighborhoods and very poor neighborhoods, he just had to listen. And when you visit Detroit now, you can see the glimmers of hope. The community has come together no matter what their skin color, no matter what their socioeconomic status, Detroit is being reborn. And it was in that environment this week that I had the opportunity to see a bunch of young people, high school kids and college kids coming together to dream as well. When we all drive cars that get 20 to 30 miles per gallon, these kids are inventing cars that get thousands of miles to the gallon. And you see, I think that as we dare to dream, the impossible becomes possible. But it's contingent on all of us to listen. Let's pray together. Gracious and eternal God, we have sometimes wandered far from you. Sometimes, even when we come to this table, our thoughts are elsewhere. 
but we know that through your loving kindness that you forgive and renew us when we fall short. Oh Lord, as we come forward, help us to receive these elements as to truly understand the saving acts of Jesus our Lord. Open our hearts and our minds to tune out the noise, to receive not just the symbols, but the clear understanding of the substance of our faith. Father God, bless these elements which we are about to partake. Cleanse our hearts and renew in us the presence of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we also pray that you receive our tithes and offerings and gifts and use them for your service. We honor you by saying the prayer that your precious son taught us by praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those that sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You know, Jesus taught and ministered in a time that his country was under foreign occupation, that his people were marginalized. And yet he talked about a time on earth that, was, that had come and was coming soon where wholeness and restoration were the way, where the last would become first, where we had faith like children, where all of the people that society marginalized were the folks that were the central element and the defining attributes of something he called God's kingdom. And he brought his closest followers together, encouraging them to dream and teaching them and at one evening meal, he took an ordinary loaf of bread and he blessed it and he broke it and said, this is my body that will be broken for you. And whenever you gather to break bread again, remember me. And then he took an ordinary cup of wine, wheeze grape juice. And he said, this is my blood that will be shed for you and for all so that your sins will be forgiven. And whenever you gather to share a cup, remember me. Here at Cypress Creek, we do gather every week around this table. The table belongs to our Lord. It doesn't belong to anyone here. And so it's an open table that all are invited to partake. All are invited to dream of a world that is coming and yet already here, where we can all live in wholeness and restoration. We recognize we're not fully there yet, but as we come to the table, we get to glimpse that thin, thin space that Bruce mentioned where heaven and earth are intertwined. And as you come forward to share in this meal this morning, we'd invite you to bring those blue cards that have your prayer concerns. We'd invite you to bring a portion of the many blessings that you've received. Come, let's share a meal together. And if you're unable to come, please raise your hand and we'd be delighted to serve you just where you are. Of course. 
the band. Any chance you can do the old Sticks song from the 1980s and pull it off beautifully. I've, I'm so excited for this church right now, for the energy that is around this dare to dream. And it's not just about daring to dream, it's about the process and people taking it seriously and being intentional about it and entering into small groups, inviting others to pray for them. And, and I, again, people have asked, so what do you want when it's all said and done? And it's real dangerous for me to say, this is what's gonna come out of this. Because we're asking all of you to dream, to dare to dream that dream God has for you and has for this collective community. And I don't want to tell you what that's going to be. But I want you to go into it with excitement and an openness. And that's what I see. Here at Cypress Creek Christian Church, each Sunday, we extend an invitation, an invitation not only into this great covenant community, but an invitation into a relationship with the living God through Christ. And if you this day wish to respond to that invitation, you can either come forward as we sing our, our song of discipleship, or you can meet with one of our elders or pastoral staff right after the service. Just want to help you grow. Want to help you begin to dream that dream that God has for your life. I invite you now, if you're able, please stand. Let us all join our voices. stuff that's happening around the church and some things I want to lift up. First of all, you probably saw it when you came in, but the Fair Trade booth is back open. They'll be open for three weeks selling the wonderful chocolate, the mint chocolate I do recommend, the coffees, the teas. So I invite you to swing by there. I also want to lift up, and I shared this, uh, Jenny Hodges, uh, uh, I shared a few weeks ago, she has this goal of running uh, six marathons over seven days. And she is going to run that as a kind of a campaign to raise both funds and awareness around human trafficking issues around the globe. And she's got a little table out here. You can uh, talk with her, uh, support her in any way. Um, but again, it's somebody who has been daring to dream something big. And might I suggest that's something pretty big. And I'm excited for her and appreciate that. Uh, we have a growing group of folks that are getting passionate about kind of relaunching Habitat for Humanity out of our congregation. If you're interested, uh, call the church office. We'll add you to that list. Prime Timers is meeting uh, this Friday uh, at noon. 
Uh, so please, if you plan to attend, let us know. Uh, sign up with Sarah. Two things happening on April 26. First of all, in all three of our worship services, we will have dance as a part of our worship experience. So one of those things, maybe it'd be a good opportunity to invite somebody you know to come to worship that Sunday. And then that night, our traditional uh, choir, along with others, is putting, to, uh, putting on their spring concert. Always a wonderful event. So I uh, hope you will come back that evening for that concert. Invite you now to reach out, take the hand of somebody. God, we are thankful for all the many places that you meet us, places that, well, where oil has been poured over a stone, those thin places where that wall has been torn down by you, and that we have been able to glimpse you, and your light shines through and upon us, not only revealing your glorious presence, but beginning to reveal the person you created in us, revealing that part of our humanity that brings a smile to your face, that part of us that you wish to empower and to send out into the world so that we are able to not only be people of your light, but that we true become, truly become transparent before others, allowing your light to spill out upon their lives. God, we ask for your blessing in this marvelous endeavor as we dare to dream in the name of Christ.